We analyzed 10,000 data science salaries and here are the results. 350K at Slack, $400,000 at DoorDash, only 250K at Facebook. All tech workers are making an insane amount of money, but data science is growing super fast. But how do you actually analyze the results to see how much you might make versus what you see on Blind or Glassdoor? Today, we're gonna actually break down the data science salaries that we analyzed for 2022 and see exactly what the real salaries are and how you can use this for your next negotiation. Also, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button because uh, it, it needs to be hit. So first off, we're gonna break down what data science salaries are into two distinct terms. There's base salary, which means how much you make uh, in your paycheck on uh, every two week basis. And then there's bonuses, RSUs, stock options, blah, 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 that comprise up of um, additional compensation. And that's gonna be the total compensation number, which is gonna be base salaries plus all those bonuses. The average base salary for a data scientist was $122,000. But if we actually look at the total compensation, that number goes up to $212,000 per year. So how do we break down this number? And does that mean that that's the number for you? I wanna add a caveat right now, first off, on the total compensation number, because I think this number is the one that people get wrong the most. And I'd say that the number is kind of misleading because of how the stock market has been treated in the past few years. For example, in this video, when I talk about how much I made uh, over my career as a data scientist, I talked about how I worked at Nextdoor and I got $30,000 in stock options when I started as a data scientist in 2018. So Nextdoor actually IPO'd uh, last year in 2021, and my stock option valuation at that point after IPO'd immediately hit around $90,000 because the stock went to $15 uh, per share in its first day. However, me sitting here five months later, the stock actually dropped back down to around $5 per share. And so now my stock options are worth a little bit less than $30,000. So the variation in my total compensation has literally, has literally changed by 60K in between that time. So it's really hard to take the salary data set that we saw and really draw an accurate comparison for total compensation because we don't really know what the stock was for a lot of these different companies when they entered the number in. Ideally, when you get an offer, you put in the number that uh, you received in terms of RSUs for the stock price at that time. But at the same time, a lot of people don't do that. So the first thing we wanna say is that there's a caveat to the $122,000 base salary number as well. As you can see from this graph, uh, the base salary for a data scientist actually went up a lot over time. Specifically by 2018, it was already at $130,000 on average. And so, but because we had data from 2013, when we averaged it out, it came out to 120,000 plus. And so when we did a recency weighting analysis, we changed it and it looks like the average is close to around 125,000. But just know that in 2021, the average data scientist salary was actually around $140,000. The role of data science is pretty misleading. There's a lot of different kinds of data scientists out there. There's machine learning engineers, there's data analysts, there's business analysts. And so what we did was we plotted out how much data scientists were actually making for people that actually had the job title data scientist versus every other one. We saw that the lowest actual average position salary was business analysts at $88,000. The highest base salary positions were product managers that worked in data as well as machine learning engineers. These guys were on average making around $160,000 instead. The last thing that I think is interesting from this graph is that you can see that data engineers actually make less than software engineers. This is tricky because a lot of the software engineers are actually working within data and technically data engineers are also called software engineers. So I'll have to do some more investigating there, but basically a lot of this data is a little hard to parse. All right, next up, we want to break up the salary by years of experience. Data science salaries definitely vary by how much experience you have in the field. You're going to make a lot less money if you're an entry level new grad than you are if you're a senior data scientist with 10 plus years of experience. While most titles don't have like seniority classifications, we did our own hierarchical matching algorithm and applied it towards all these titles and basically broke uh, seniority into five different, different types. There's entry level, which is zero to one years of experience. There's mid-level, which is two to five years of experience. There's senior, which is basically six plus years of experience. Uh, there's, then there's like stuff like principal and staff, but we put it into senior because that got a little bit complicated because those differ by different companies. And then there's manager level, uh, which is basically you're managing a team and then director executive level which is basically the highest level for management. What we saw from the data was that as an entry level data scientist, on average, 
you're making around $100,000 per year in base salary. But what's interesting is that once you get a few years of experience, as a mid-level or senior data scientist, you can make around $150,000. And even the data science managers make around $150,000 too. So I think there's a little bit of bias in that data based on what kind of companies actually call people data science managers. The total comp though for senior data scientists is pretty insane. It goes all the way up to $250,000 on average. This suggests that a lot of the time, senior data scientists that are actually have that 10 to 15 years of experience can make a lot of money on the high end. You can expect that senior data scientists that have that experience are kind of that 10 extra attitude towards uh, the way that Silicon Valley has towards engineers. And so they're doing a lot more impact work and they're probably working on either really advanced machine learning models or uh, specifically have a lot of sway in terms of at big and small companies. Now, analyzing data science salaries by location, we first looked at the top 10 cities that paid the data scientists the most. It's no surprise that San Francisco and Seattle rounded off at the top with salaries of up to $130,000 to $150,000 on average in base salary. The other thing to note here is that you can see that with our average around 120 to 140, but the top cities, actually only five of them pay their data scientists on average more than $120,000. And this is because a lot of this data is skewed towards data scientists that work in Seattle and San Francisco. The other interesting thing here is that what we wanted to do is actually normalize this data by a cost of living. With the advent of remote work during COVID, it's a lot easier now for you to get a job anywhere in the US and still retain a pretty high salary versus how much you're actually paying for your cost of living, such as rent or food in the local area. So if we normalize all these salaries by cost of living, the top city to actually live in is Boise, Idaho. We see Boise, Idaho, Arkansas, and Cincinnati are the top three cities based on the cost of, cost of living salary index that we pulled from NumDO. Rounding off that list is Memphis, San Antonio, Salt Lake City, Houston, Kansas City, Austin, Fort Worth, and Columbus. So it makes a lot of sense why these, all these companies have huge increases in their home prices right now. Uh, there's a bunch of remote workers basically flocking to this area because they're getting more bang for their buck for data science and tech salaries. Lastly, we wanted to look at how much data scientists were making on a per company basis. And this is where we expected to see the most variation across almost all things. And obviously all of these salaries are above that core average because there's a lot of data science salaries that are as startups or just like non-tech companies that probably just don't make that much money that drags that lower tail. So that's a quick summary of data science salaries. If you guys want to view more, we actually created thousands of different pages on data science salaries and broke them up into cool different kinds of graphs and dashboards specifically for data scientists. And we have those on interview query today. So just go through there, you can browse through and let me know in the comments if there's any kind of features or any kind of salary data points that surprised you in this video. Our goal is to make this, more of this data transparent and actually uh, insightful for you as a data scientist to understand for your next negotiation. So you'd be able to drill down into very specifically how many years of experience you have, which city that you're going to work in, and what company that you're going for to understand exactly how much you should negotiate for your next uh, paycheck. Additionally, if there's any feature requests or any things in the graph that are kind of weird, please let me know. Uh, a lot of the data points are a little bit sparse and we're trying to improve this. And so specifically our goal is to make uh, these data science dashboards specifically for data scientists that want to uh, check out different kinds of graphs or visualizations. And so let me know in the comments what you guys think. Thanks for watching and be sure to like and subscribe. Bye.